testing, testing. I figured out what I had wrong. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> what was wrong? I had my, uh, manual mic muted. It wasn't anything wrong with OBS at all. So, yeah. Yep. I'm a big dumb. Let me turn the music down a tiny bit. <sighs> so that was a nice waste of 13 minutes. Sorry, 20 minutes. Anyways, I'm gonna start the game in, I don't know, five minutes, so that I can, like, just kind of be like, okay, I'm done. Just pardon. Actually, you know what? Let's just get to the game. <laughs> That's what we're all here for anyways, right? So, we were with April, we were, oh yeah, we're at the bottom of the ocean. So, we gotta figure out what the heck's going on. Yeah, she's wet. I'm wet. It's a drawing of a man cutting his finger open and squeezing some blood into a bowl together with some green, mossy stuff. Ooh. And he mashes it together and... Oh, gross! He dips a black pearl in it and eats it. That's barbaric. Maybe the stories about the cannibal merman were true after all. But hey, in the next one he seems capable of speaking fluently with the creatures that brought me here. I wouldn't mind that, if it could get me the hell out of here. Hmm. The walls look organic. And those blue things... I think they're polyps of some kind. They live inside the wall and are part of the structure. National Geographic would go nuts over stuff like this. Polyp. Oh, can I do stuff with it? There's fresh oxygen coming through here. These polyps must process the oxygen in the water somehow. That's how I'm able to breathe in here. I'll take it. Ugh. Squishy noises. It's the polyp I yanked out of the wall. Said that she, he uh, poked himself, didn't he? Well, sorry, April. I'm gonna use this. If this gets infected and I have to chew off my finger to fight the gangrene, I'm suing somebody. Ow. Things I do to save the world. Worlds. So we've got some blood. Mix it with the polyp. Maybe polyp then. Maybe if I 
use it on her. Can I go outside? There's water out there. Lots of water. I'll just drown if I try to leave. There's fresh oxygen coming through here. This whole structure looks organic, and there are polyps living inside the walls. It's the polyp I yanked out of the wall. Yes, we get that. It's a drawing of a man mixing some green, mossy stuff with his own blood, applying the mixture to a black pearl, and then eating the pearl. Afterwards, he's able to speak with the merman. There's fresh oxygen coming through here. Yes, we get that, but... How am I supposed to... go outside? It's the polyp I yanked out of the wall. A drop of my sweet, precious blood. supposed to be able to Come on, April eat it it's a colorful candy wrapper it's a piece of the stone disc I got from the Bonda people there is no green stuff around here. This whole structure looks organic, and there are polyps living inside the walls. Supposedly supposed to be able to eat the polyp, but it's not letting me click it. Eat the polyp, April. It's a drawing of a man mixing some green, mossy stuff with his own blood, applying the mixture to a black pearl, and then eating the pearl. Afterwards, he's able to speak with the merman. Maybe over here? It's a drawing of a man. A human. There sticking we go. a strange, polyp-shaped object into his mouth. Ugh! In the next drawing, he seems to be able to breathe underwater. Convenient, if somewhat radical. That means now I'll be able to eat, get her to eat it, I bet. There we go. Oh, this is so disgusting, but I have to get out of here. Ugh. Ugh, the noise. That was definitely a noise. Yuck. It's a big seashell. There's a large black pearl inside the seashell. Wiggle, April, wiggle. The seaweed here is so thick and tangled. It looks almost deliberate. The seaweed here is so thick. Okay. Uh, let's go to the city. I'm wiggling away. Oh, hello. It's a more person. God knows what sex it is, but I'm sure it's not the one that kidnapped me. That one had smaller wings. Some kind of more person. Who are you? Lucky 
me. I'm stuck at the bottom of the sea with Bubbles the Mermaid. Bubbles. There's got to be a way to communicate with these creatures. Let's just take this. It's a pretty blue crystal. Hi, Bubbles. I'm, uh, yoinking all your stuff. It's a glowing green substance that's spread evenly across the walls, providing light and heat. Maybe that's the green stuff I'm supposed to get. back there, didn't I? Yeah, I did. I need that pearl. Mother of pearl. real fast. Swallow it. I've always had trouble swallowing pills, especially huge golden magical ones. Well, here goes nothing. <laughs> Oof. And let's go back and see if that worked. Yeah, it's probably not pleasant uh, swallowing your A, your own blood, B, some moss, and C, a pearl. Ugh. Disgusting. Alright, let's see if we can talk to Miss Bubbles. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, we understand. Haha! Weird. I have this nagging feeling in the back of my mind that I shouldn't be able to understand what you're saying, but I do. You have passed the two tests of the Gatherer Landwalker. Breathing water and speaking the tongue of the Merum. You can serve us now. Do what now? Serve you? You have been brought here to serve us as the gatherer of Tanyan. What's Tanyan? Tanyan is life. Tanyan brings light to darkness and sustenance to our caves. Tanyan keeps the snapjaw from our children and heats us when it is cold. Tanyan is life. Where does Tanyan come from? Our gatherers collect it from the caves and shores of the islands, but there is less Tanyan to be found each season, and we need help. I wonder if the Tanyan is that green stuff. How does Tanyan do all those things you said? Tanyan provides warmth and light. It draws the harvest close. Harvest? The creatures of the sea that we eat, the golden tail, and the weed eye, and the sand eater. Fish? You're talking about fish. The harvest, yes. That is what we said. The harvest is drawn to the light and to the heat. But the snapjaw are clever. They stay away. They know the light allows us better aim with our spears. Why can't you gather Tanyan yourself? We do, but we cannot move far from our cities 
or the snapjaw will hunt us and eat us. If we travel in force, we leave our men and children without guard. And we cannot travel too close to the islands, or the wing demons may catch eye of us. They leave our gatherers alone, though, so you have nothing to fear. Who are the wing demons? Ugly, leathery creatures who defy nature to fly up there in the sky. They are evil and live to destroy our people. Don't the Snapjaw kill the gatherers? Rarely. Your meat is bitter and tough, not soft and tender like ours. I won't ask how you know that. I think I've learned enough about Tan Yen for now. You have learned nothing, but your training will teach you what you need to know. Are your people called the Miram? We are the Miram. Most landwalkers call us Mermen or Mer people, but the Miram is our name in truth. Who are you, man? We are the queen of the third city of the Miram, enlightened keeper of the Tan Yen, protector of the light. I'm sorry, your... Your Majesty, I really had no idea you were a queen. We are just a queen. Our function is to serve the people, to light our cities, provide food for our men and children, and to protect them from the snapjaw that hunt us in the dark. So I guess they're a matriarchy, not a patriarchy. Do you know where my ship went down? The vessel you foolishly travel in above the water? It rests not far from the city, just past and beyond the Landwalker's bubble where you were first brought. I think it is dead. <laughs> yeah, I think it's dead. Where did you say I could find the shipwreck? Just past and beyond the Landwalker's bubble. Do you know the island of Elias? Yes, we know the island of Alais. Our gatherers find Tanyan there, and the Miram once had a city in the shallow waters below it. Can you bring me there? Until your training is complete, you cannot go gathering. We cannot risk losing you to the Snapjaw, or to have you desert your duties to our people. How long will my training take? Six cold oceans. Six years? Sure, that makes sense. Everything in this world takes ages. I've been told that you worship an old god who lives in the deep. How did you come by this forbidden knowledge? I picked it up on my way here. Could you take me to him? You? No, we cannot. Unless you are Miram, you are not even allowed to speak of our sleeping god. Well, sorry. Thanks for your time. We will call on you soon to begin your service. Until then, you should stay inside the Landwalker's bubble and away from the dark waters where the Snapjaw lurk. It's Spear. A harpoon, I guess it's called in maritime terminology. I'm gonna take that. Why not? Leave the spear be. It belongs to the water stiller. Sorry. The water stiller, huh? Maybe I can show It's the crystal I took from the Marian's home. We're Do you need this? this? No. It is of no value to us. Where did you find it? It looks very old. I believe one of the children found it just outside the city. Not far from the Landwalker's bubble. Among the seaweed by the rocks. We have used it for decoration in our hall. But you are welcome to it. Consider it a gift, gatherer. Hmm. Well, all right then. Let's 
see if we can mess with that now. Here's another one of those crystals buried in the sand among the seaweed. Judging by the amount of seaweed, it's a long time since anybody's been in there. Well, let's go in there. It's another one of those blue crystals. I'll take that. It's another one of those blue crystals. And I'll take that. A stone altar I can look at. Okay. This ring is inscribed with the image of a clay pot. It's inscribed with the image of a wave, probably representing water. do I have? One, two, three, four. I have four crystals. Oh boy, a puzzle. Uh, let's see. This is a yellow one. Let's put that there. Let's take the green one and put that there. Crystal here, red crystal here. Okay, water. Looks like some kind of visual history of the Marum people. Let's find out about it. According to this first tablet... Oh my god! It turns out the Marum came to Earth inside a type of spaceship from another planet! <laughs> They're aliens? Aliens. Not that anything should surprise me at this point, <laughs> but still. They look very different back then, though. It must have been a long time ago. The ship looks to have been a living thing, according to these drawings. Wait a minute. Could this be their ancient god? One of the dragons? I think it has to be. After they arrived on Earth, their species divided in two. One crawled into the sea, the other onto land. What does that mean? This must be a while later, because the Marum look like they do today. At least the ones who went into the sea do. The other ones? They have wings. If I'm going to guess, I'd say that the ones who went to live on land became the Alation, which means the Marum and Alation are related. In this one, they're living close to each other and in peace. 
and it seems they share equally in the production of Tan Yen, which attracts fish for both peoples to eat. Then something happens. War, it looks like, and the Merim and Alation move away from each other. In this last one, Tan Yen is beginning to become scarce, and the Merim are losing many of their young ones to the Snapjaw. They fear the Alation, and they forget their common heritage. At the very end, there's a prophecy, I think. The Merim and the Alation joining hands once again. When they do, Tan Yen becomes plentiful and both people prosper. Okay. What's the symbol over here? It's a circular indentation framed with the image of two dragons biting each other's tails. Almost exactly like the markings on my talisman. Crystals on the altar light up the entire cave. All right, let's go ask the uh, queen about this. Hey, Queenie. Got some explaining to do. Yes, gatherer. We may. Who or what is the water stiller? The water stiller is in our prophecies. She is the land walker who will make us a people united and end all strife. So you're at war with other Merrim? No. And so the time for the water stiller is still to come. We are at peace with other Merrim. What else can you tell me about the water stiller? She will come among us by providence, and she will take something from us that we have kept hidden for many generations. What is it the water stiller will come to take from you? We do not know, but she will open up the ancient shrine and bring light to the darkness. She will destroy a snapjaw with her spear, give witness of her mission, and then she will reunite us. She sounds like a swell person. She is the water stiller. She is prophecy. Why was the cave with the altar and the wall painting just outside the city abandoned? What? Show us this cave immediately. I lit the cave by placing the crystal from your palace together with three more crystals I found on the altar and moving the stone rings into their correct positions. Can it be that you are? But you are a gatherer. You cannot be she. Oh, who can't I be? The water stiller. She who, by prophecy, will deliver us from strife and unite us as one people. She who will uncover the ancient shrine. Looks pretty ancient to me. This is the shrine, yes. And you have brought light to the darkness as well. But the other prophecies, you have not fulfilled them. You have not proven yourself to be the water stiller yet. How can I do that? Come back with us and we will tell you. I guess it's time to uh, kill Snapjaw. How can I prove that I'm the water stiller? You have uncovered the ancient shrine and brought light to the darkness. But this could be just chance. You must show us the witness you carry of your mission to the balance. So the talisman. talisman! Damn, I lost it when the storm hit us! You must also kill a Snapjaw with a spear. And then you will have proven yourself to us. Once you have done this, we will aid you in your quest to make us one people. Who is the water stiller? She is of the prophecies. She will bring an end to strife and unite our people. Where do I begin? Take this spear and slaughter a snapjaw. 
This must be done to prove your strength, and to prove you are of the Miram. Where do I find the Snapjaw? If you are the Water Stiller, you will find a way. It's a harpoon! Yoink! Be right back. Might be it. Is there anything I can click? Yep. Okay, let's go in. <laughs> or not. Ah. <laughs> I'm guessing that is the snapjaw. The snapjaw is keeping to the shadows, waiting for me to get close enough to attack. Harpoon you. Get a snack for you. Do a barrel roll. It's dead. I killed it. Good job. I'll need something to bring back to prove that I killed the snapjaw. This tooth will do just fine. Oh man, that's sharp! I had no idea Snapjaw had razor teeth. If I did, better not think about that now. <laughs> hey, there's my talisman. It's my talisman! What incredible luck! Can you swim any faster, April? Well, all right, let's go back to the city and show this. That should prove that we're the water stiller at the very least. I bet you they have pieces of the disc. Here's a tooth from the dreaded Snapjaw that guarded the shipwreck, proof of my strength and courage. You have fulfilled that part of the prophecy. If you fulfill the rest, we will acknowledge you as the Water Stiller. Alright, you asked for it. Wait for it. Here's proof what of my mission. A magical talisman with the sign of the balance. It means that I'm the 13th guardian of the balance. You have fulfilled that part of the prophecy. If you fulfill the rest, we will acknowledge you as the water stiller. Uh, lady, isn't that all? I need to go back to the cave. Aha! Let's go back to the queen. 
Wait, hold, hold on, hold on. No, I was, didn't look at it. Ah. It's a small niche containing what appears to be a shard of a stone. Well, then let's take it. Maybe that's what I need to show her. It's a piece of the stone disc! Sweet. Disc. No, wait. It's only one half of a piece. It looks like it's been divided in two. Strange. Hmm, I wonder who else could have it. Maybe the Elation people? Alright, let's show her this. It's one half of one of the four pieces of the stone disc. I got this from the Temple Cave of the Merum. I've taken from you the object you've kept hidden for generations. It's part of the disc that will restore the balance and save the twin worlds from chaos. You have indeed fulfilled all but one of the prophecies. You might yet be the water stiller. We would not have thought she would come in our lifetime. Good. Then you'll take me to your sleeping god. There is but one more prophecy you must fulfill. There's more? Sure, there's always more. That's the fun part about prophecies. <laughs> you must unite our people once again. But you said you were united, that there's no strife between Miram. The Water Stiller will come to bring our people together again, to unite us and save us. This has still not come to pass. Until you do so, the prophecies of the Water Stiller have not fully come to pass. I think I know now what the prophecies mean when they say your people will be reunited. The Miram are at peace with each other, yes? You're not at peace with the Elation. The Wind Demons. They are our enemies. Right now they might be. But it wasn't always like that. Not according to the carvings in the Temple Cave. What do you mean? Once upon a time, long ago, the Miram and the Elation were one people. What? This is heresy. I'm just telling you what I saw in your temple. This was a very long time ago, and the one species soon divided in two. One sought refuge in the sea, the other on the winds. But both the Miram and the Elation were dependent on the other for various reasons, amongst them Ten Yen, which was abundant where the two people lived in close proximity to each other. Apparently, there was peace between your two people for a very long time, but then something happened, something that caused a war to break out. Both the Elation and the Mira moved far away from each other, and ever since then, your people have had a tough time finding Tan Yen. I think the only way to save the Mira from a slow death, and the Elation as well probably, is to reconcile you with your, uh, common ancestry. How can we believe you, Water Stiller? Your words are too outrageous, and the consequences, were you to be speaking the truth, are grave. If you don't believe me, check out the temple walls. The whole story has been recorded there, probably when you first came to this place. But what will our people say? What will they think when we tell them they are brothers and sisters to the winged demons? Who cares? You're their queen, and so you'll have to make them understand and accept their heritage. As must the elation, I expect, and I don't think it will be any easier for them to come to terms with their history. You must go to them, then, to find if our temple speaks the truth, and if they are willing to speak with us like civilized people. I guess I must, water stiller or not. If you don't reunite with them, you will die, eventually. We will bring you to the shores of their closest island, and we will await word from you on their answer. Does this mean you believe me? You are the water stiller. You are prophecy. We will follow your directions and fulfill our destiny. One of our people will bring you to Aleus, a night's journey from here. Once there, you will find the Elation and speak with their leaders. 
If they agree to meet, then we will do so in a place of your choosing. I promise I'll do my best. Goodbye. Safe journey, Water Stella. We will hold on to the piece of the disc you found in the temple. If no. the wing demons, no, I want to keep on to that. Agree to meet us. We will bring the stone. Give it back. Rude. Time to save. And good time to take a break. Which by saying the the one with uh, the snap jaw, <laughs> it was like do a barrel roll. <sighs> yeah, that, that was pretty funny. I'll be right back. I'm gonna go grab some hydration. All right, be right back.
I'm back. I am fully hydrated. Which is a very good thing for your streamer to be hydrated. What is this music? This is the soundtrack for the next game in this series, which is Dreamfall The Longest Journey. So this is what you can expect next game. I kind of like the music, so I figured I'd throw it on there for a little bit of, uh, you know, variety. There's only so many times you can play Paradise Killer soundtrack without playing it. Which, honestly, I do kind of want to play Paradise Killer after watching SGF's uh, playthrough of it. Alright. It is a thing I could do. I've got a couple of games lined up, but I do want to get through the Dreamfall series before I get to anything else. Because I, I really enjoy it. And having that continuity across the games is pretty nice. Good evening, we vote for Hobbits. How are you doing today? had some interesting progress going on, so I guess we had the Miram in the first part of the stream, and now we're going to tackle the Elation people in the second part. Maybe we can get two pieces of the disc in one stream. That would be pretty awesome. Alright, well, let's get back to the stream. Let's look around. We've been washed up on a beach. I could get lost if I just wander off into the jungle with no idea what the island looks like or where I'm heading. Probably not a good idea. There's a coil of rope among the debris. That could be useful. Debris from another capsized ship. These must be dangerous waters. Just the jungle again. The top half of the statue depicts a big mouthed creature calling out. It's the ruins of an old city. All ruins, jungle. There's a hole in the ground. Wonder if that could be useful. It's a deep hole. More like a crevice, actually. Caused by some kind of seismic activity. God, it must be at least 50 meters down. The crevice widens out into a huge cave just below. And there's water at the bottom. Well, time to use that rope. It's a long rope. Hope it's long enough. Hmm. 
Okay, let's go into the cave. once housing the elation, but now empty and in disrepair. Elation nests. Is that all we can see? Nests, nests, nests. Let's keep on going down. Oh, hello! The remains of a stone structure that probably fell down here through the crevice. There's a piece amongst the rubble that looks like a bolt or a key. It's intact. Let's take that. That's probably important. That's a Marum City. Looks like a lot of seashells to me. It's a deserted Marum city. Yep, sure is. I guess that's all she's got to say about that. Let's go ahead and climb back up and see what else we can find. It's a triangular hole, like a keyhole. Oh, wait, did we get... we need to get a rope. Mustn't forget our rope. I wonder what that rumbling noise is. It's pretty, uh, constant. It's a kind of stone key carved into the uncanny likeness of a key, with the head on the a end. A key carved into the uncanny likeness of a key. Very... Very descriptive there. Oh, hey. Creature with large ears. It's a creature with a big mouth. Well, don't know what that could do yet, so let's continue looking around. Some kind of giant crab. Sounds like the poor thing's in a lot of pain. Yeah, the shell does look way too tight. Maybe he's outgrown it but can't shed it. Or whatever it's called. I'll just take a shot here and ask you. Is there any chance you speak like a real language? Like, um, Arcadian or English? Okay. Now, is there some kind of magic I have to learn, or potion I have to drink, or eat, or ingest in some way to learn your language? Because that's usually how it goes. <laughs> April is so done. No? Too bad. Although I'm glad I don't have to draw blood or swallow a stone or something. Can't help but feel that you're asking me for help, though. It's the strangest thing. After all, you're just clicking your claws, aren't you? It's not as if you're really talking, is it? It's 
It's the Village of the Giant Crabs. Hey, that sounds like a great name for a B-movie. Village of the Giant Crabs. Maybe I can help or something? I can't break the shell. It's too thick and solid. It sounds like the poor thing's in a lot of pain. Okay. It's a big statue. We'll be back, Krabby. It's an old fireplace. I can see clear to the bottom. This really is an excellent spot for fishing. The top half of the statue depicts a creature with a big mouth calling out. The bottom part of the statue depicts a creature with large ears listening to something. I could get lost if I just wander off into the jungle with no idea of what the island looks like or where I'm heading. Well, maybe we can get an eye in the sky. Hiya, Crow. April! You're alive! You're here! You're... soaking wet! Where did you go? I thought you drowned! I was completely miserable! And the chicks on this island are so prissy. They don't even care for a kiss unless you're all settled down with a nest in your own territory. <laughs> That's a lot of women. Glad to see you haven't lost the gift of the gab crow. Lady, you have no idea how limited bird Twitter can be. It's all, hi this and here I am that, all damn day long. I haven't had a decent conversation in days. Well, you're making up for it now. <laughs> I never know when you're going to go AWOL on me again. I had a little adventure under the sea. Oh? I didn't know humans had gills. We don't. We don't. Well, I do. I think. At least I can breathe underwater now. Cool. Not as cool as being able to fly, of course, but still. Hey, does that mean you're a mermaid? Hardly. I don't have a tail. What did you do after I saw you last? Well, it took a while, but I found land. Not this island, just a rock with a couple of trees, basically. But when I went back to tell you, you disappeared. I thought you'd gone bonkers from thirst and hunger and drowned yourself or something, so I decided I'd better find solid ground myself or I'd suffer the same fate. And then I found this place. Nice, isn't it? And the best part is, there are no hunters. Only a bunch of big crabs on the east side of the island and a volcano. Volcano? I'm gonna walk around for a bit, Crow. I'll just stay here and preen myself, thank you very much. I could get lost if I just wander off into the jungle with no idea of what the island looks like or where I'm heading. What can you tell me about the island, Crow? Only what I've been able to see from above. 
There's a volcano, dead I think, and lots of jungle, and some nice beaches. I'd like to explore the jungle, but I'm afraid I'm going to get lost. Any ideas? Well, I could stay airborne and keep track of where you are. That way I could direct you if... Sorry, when you get lost. Gee, thanks. Sounds like a super plan, Crow. Let's go. Crow GPS. The rumbling is much fiercer here, and the ground is really shaking. It's definitely seismic. It has got to be emanating from this volcanic mountain. I mean, it looks dead, but it must be about to wake up or erupt or something. Great! After surviving a shipwreck, being kidnapped by fishes, and learning to breathe in water, I'm about to die in a volcanic eruption? Isn't that ironic? Interesting. It looks like I can use my key here. It's a small, eye-sized aperture with a crystal in it, like a lens. Maybe some kind of telescope? I don't see anything interesting. It's a statue standing in the ruins of a city. What a strange symbol. I can see a statue on a cliff overlooking the sea. I don't see anything interesting. See anything interesting? I don't see anything interesting. I don't see anything interesting. Okay, I guess nothing's interesting anymore. What's that? That's one mother of a tree. It's got to be at least a hundred meters tall. And what's that in the tree crown? Looks like a man-made construction. That's a huge tree. That's a huge tree. There's a large object in the tree crown. Dried twigs and sticks. The bottom half of the statue depicts a creature listening, while the top part depicts a similar creature calling out. Dry twigs and sticks. Dry twigs and sticks. It's a creature with large ears. It's a creature with a big mouth. It's a creature with a big mouth. Dry twig, dry twigs and sticks. Dry 
dried twigs and sticks. Dow! Ah! Shh! Who's there? Da. Tree beard! Shut up. I know there's somebody there. Up. I heard you. Is she gone? <laughs> nope. She's still around. Shut up, shut up, shut up. If you won't come out, I'll just sit down here and wait. Sooner or later, you'll have to show yourself. Solar eclipse! Oh my god! <laughs> ah! Solar I eclipse. hate this place. I so hate it, I can't even sit down without crushing the natives. He got moon. Big person alert! <laughs> what are you? What does it look like? Um, a talking twig? We're stickmen. And you're an accident waiting to happen with your large, ungainly body and wobbly legs. What's a stick man? An unlucky bugger doomed to a miserable life of stiff backs and monotonous drudgery in the shadow of a mother tree. Happy little fella, ain't ya? You have no idea. Where do the Elation live? The Elation? The guys with wings? Up in the volcano. There's an old city in there. I think they're squatting. What's that constant rumbling noise? Lady, you have no idea what we have to endure. All day, all night, that noise is just murder. It all started when Kwaman, the quiet giant, would you believe that's what we used to call him? was banished by the Orowal from his perfect fishing place to some remote place in the forest. Whoa, information overload. Let's step back for a minute to fill in the details. Who's Kwaman, the quiet giant? He's the scariest human we've ever seen. He stands tall as a mountain and uses whole trees for toothpicks. But he was the quiet type and reasonably gentle for a human. He'd spend his days out by the Olawal village, catching fish and frying fish and eating fish, and looking out across the ocean dreaming about loose women or whatnot. <laughs> okay. What happened to get the quiet giant banished from that place? The Olawal got scared when he accidentally stepped on one of their young ones. He didn't do any real harm. But they banished him from their village nonetheless, and told him to go far into the forest. Who are the Orlua? They're the crab-like creatures who live down by the sea. Ah, they're nice people, if a little crabby. Uh, and it's hard crabby, to understand what they're saying half creatures. the time. Where's Kwaman now? Somewhere in the forest east of here, we don't know where exactly. He went there to get as far away from the aura wall as possible. So what does all this have to do with the rumbling noise? Oh, I was getting to that. If you just let me get a word in edgewise. I just had some questions is all. Anyway, Kwaman is the brooding type. And he takes everything so to heart, he got instantly depressed and went to sleep. And what is he doing now? Still sleeping! That's the problem! But how long ago was it that the Orlawal banished him? The last full moon. Nearly 30 sunsets passed. He's been sleeping for a month? He was depressed. What do you want, lady? Once I got so miserable I slept for eight years. And let me tell you, those eight years were the happiest of my life. I would love to sleep for eight years. How can you sleep for eight years? With these morons around? I'm not <laughs> even going to answer that question. I still don't understand what this has to do with the rumbling noise. See that statue over there? Sure. What's up with that? Back when the Dalmari lived on this island ages ago, they put these statues up all around the island so that they could speak with each other. You're kidding. So they're, like, telephones? Tell her what? I don't know what that is. The thing is, these statues are all connected through magic. 
and when you speak into one, your voice flies through the air and comes out of another statue. Speak but I counts. still don't understand. You saw the big head up by the mountain. It's an intercom yes? system. That's the one they use to talk to everyone on the island, to warn people of storms or to hold evening prayer. It's connected to the statues as well. And Kwaman is sleeping right next to a statue's ear. I get it. Resonance. He's snoring and the deep bass reverberating through the loudspeaker. The big head causes a resonance that vibrates the entire island. But can't you just wake him up? We don't know where he is. We're not much for exploring this forest. There's water and fire and monkeys. Monkeys like to play with sticks. We don't like monkeys. But can't you just, well, send your voice to his tele statue to wake him up? There are four problems with that. Number one, all the statues have an assigned symbol, an identifying mark. But we don't know which his is. Second, most of the statues are broken in some way or another. What do you mean? Some statues can only talk to certain other statues. Some can't be spoken to, and some can't hear. Which makes it very difficult to get a connection through to where you want to send your voice. Hmm. Number three, in order to use the statues, you need a key. We don't have it. We don't know where it is. I've got a key. And number four? We're stick men, lady. What do you think? We don't know much about magic or magical devices. And, and... And what? Uh, we're not too smart, okay? <laughs> there, I said it. We're not too smart. And when you look at Woody over there, who's pretty stupid by stickman standards, that's a pretty scary thought. Sorry, I asked. Alright, so that makes our job pretty clear. We gotta uh, mess with the statues until we can uh, wake Mr. Quammen up from his sleep. And I'm gonna save so that we don't have any issues later on. Let's see. It's a creature with a big mouth. It's a triangular hole, like a keyhole. That should do it for that one. Let's go to the cliff statue. Is that here? No, that was elsewhere. Now oh, that's city ruins. To the cliff statue, real fast. It's another one of those magical public tele. We'll be back, Krabby. I promise. <laughs>
It's a triangular hole, like a keyhole. Hopefully that should have done it. So I need to go back to the intercom system and see if that worked. To the big statue. Big mouth statue. If it worked, I should be able to uh, tell him to wake up. There's a large object in the- I realized what I needed to do. I need to go back to the first area with the statues, so the large tree. And I should be able to talk. Hello? Dirty laundry being aired. You want to talk about your problems? Face to face? What be the point? I'm a good listener, and I'd like to be your friend. That'd be the point. Guaman, not sure if he want friend now. Please let me be your friend. 
Why? Because I'm lonely too. I don't really know anybody on this island, and I need some help. And I'm a woman. Well, Kwama be wanting to help, but... Okay. Kwame be your friend and talk to you. My secret place be in the ruins of the old temple by the wells. Follow the stream up from the rock beach and go right where it branches. Thanks, Kwame. I'll be there as soon as I can. Alright, we've got our destination. Man, that was fast. That's Quammen, the not-so-quiet giant. Boop. Whoa! You are big! You're just about the biggest person I've ever met! Tee-hee. Quammen be a freak. No one be liking him. I didn't mean it that way, I just meant... April, you know just what to say, don't you? I'm sorry. I like tall guys. Really, I do. You be the only one, then. Because no one else want anything to do with Kwaman. How did you come to be on this island? That be a long story. Do you want Kwaman to be telling you? Sure I have time. Tell me the story. Many long moons ago, Kwaman be happy. He be working at the Circa in Coruscant, where he be big attraction. What did you do? Kwaman be the world's strongest man. He be popular. People come to see him from all the Northlands. Some even from east of the Bay of Fire. But then there be an accident. And the Circa tell Kwaman to leave. That he be dangerous. And that no one be paying to see him anymore. What kind of accident? Kwaman's most popular feat be the breaking of large rocks with his fist. Everyone would applaud when the rock be breaking. Then one day, the Kalaf be at the Circa to see the performers. He be saying, Kwaman, I hear of him breaking a large rock with his fist. This I want to see. But my performance be over that day, and there be no rock to break. So the Circa Ringmaster Obron, he be saying, let's get a rock in here, any big rock at all. So they bring in this rock that Kwama never be crushing before. Kwama not be sure if it is a good idea, because rock can be dangerous when it breaks. But Obron be saying, this you must do. The Caliph wants to see. We do not disappoint the Caliph of Khorasan, or we lose our heads. So Kwaman break the rock, and when it breaks... What, what happened? There be large pieces of rock flying everywhere, and one piece be hitting the Caliph and one his son. The Caliph be not seriously hurt, but his son be unconscious and bleeding from the head. They say That's to Kwaman, Run! Get away from the Circa and Khorasan, or the Caliph will have his head. So Kwaman run, and he get passage on ship leaving that night. When the ship passed this island, Kwaman be jumping into sea and swimming ashore. And now he be here. What happened between you and the Orlowal? Oh, 
Quaman be so clumsy, so dangerous. He should not be among people. He be only hurting them. The Olawal be kind, letting Quaman live and fish in their village. But then Quaman be stepping over young Olawal, almost breaking his shell. The Olawal tell Quaman to leave village, to not come back because he may kill an Olawal. They tell him to go as far away as possible. Quaman be sad because he liked the Olawal and because Quaman be having the best fishing place in all of Elias. He lose his friends and his food. What do you eat now? Quaman fish in these wells here, but the fish that live down there be small and not very tasty. Would you like to move back to the Orlawal village? Oh yes. Quaman be wishing that more than anything in the world. I saw an Orlawal down by the beach, just outside the village. It seemed to be in pain, but I didn't know what to do. Perhaps if you come along, you can help him out, and get back in favor with the Orlawal people. Yes, perhaps Quaman can help, even if the Orlawal do not want him back. Here it is, the, uh, Orlawal? Can you help it? Perhaps Quaman can help. Poor Orlawal. He'd be crying for help. Uh, Quaman see what be wrong. The Orlawal not shed its shell when time come, and now it be stuck in the shell. Why didn't the other Orlawal come to its assistance? Their claws be no good for this work. They be helpless. But Quaman help. Quaman be good with his hands. Quaman be happy. Quaman accept your graceful thanks, sir. Thank you. You be making Quaman very happy. Quaman accept your offer and be grateful to the Orlawal people. Thank you very much. What? What did he say? Why did you thank him? Olawal be inviting Quaman to stay on the cliff above the village, where he can fish again. Quaman be very, very happy now. You understand what it's saying? Olawal language be easy to understand. It be just click and clack and clock. I'm so happy for you, Quaman. <laughs> Go on, don't let me hold you back. Yay! Happy ending. For him, at least. Let's go up to the cliff. Hey, Quaman, how's the fish biting? With its teeth? <laughs> or not today. Why is that? Quaman be not certain. The fish always bite before, but then Quaman be having lure. Now no lure, just bait. What do you need to make a lure? Quaman can make lure with just anything, as long as it be colorful and not get heavy in water. You're a real DIY guy, don't you know? Always be something wrong with Quaman. Oh no, no. That was actually a compliment. Oh. Are you happy now, Quaman? Quaman be happy. He be wanting fish to bite. But if they do not, Quaman still be happy. Can I borrow your fishing rod? Quaman must catch fish first, so he can eat. After Quaman catch fish, April can borrow fishing rod. Happy fishing! Thank you. He's such a sweetheart. I love him. He's the best boy. It's a colorful candy wrapper. Could this wrapper work as a lure? 
Yes. Yes, with some work. It'd be perfect for a lure. Now Quaman can make one, and hopefully catch many fish. So, can I have your fishing rod now? Hello, Quaman. Hello, April. Happy fishing. Guess not. Thank you. Okay. go back to the jungle, see if there's anything else we can get. Hello, I'm Woody. They call me the stupid one, cause I'm kinda slow, so don't let me keep you busy. I was born with a big brain, so I can't move as fast as my two brothers. I can only do useless stuff like calculations and design, and I play a few instruments, and I'm writing a book on the flora and fauna of Alaeus. Oh, all right there. <laughs> How do I get into the volcano? You don't. The road collapsed a few centuries ago, and when traders come, the elation fly down to meet them. Nobody goes up there anymore. I'll see you guys later then. If you don't step on us first. Yeah, yeah. Hi, I'm Will. Wick's the oldest. Woody's the youngest. And I'm just stuck in the middle, as always. Don't let me keep you. Wicks the boss, as always. Go talk to him. Oh, I can climb the tree. That looks like a catapult. It's April. a big wooden catapult, maybe? Crossbow, I guess. I wonder who built it and what it's for. If I could somehow get across to that path on the other side, I'd probably be able to make my way into the Alation village. That could be useful. It's a wooden crossbow. Okay. So, who built this? Who built that big crossbow in the tree? I did. Well, I thought of it. And these two nincompoops gave a helping twig on the, uh, manual side. So they built it, and you supervised? Yep. But it's not done. There are still a few pieces missing before we can blast off for Luna. Luna? Did you say blast off for Luna? That's what I said, Luna. As in the moon? The same. You intend to go to the moon using that... thing? Lunar cannon. And yes, that's the plan. Why? You guys are loonies! If by loonies you mean visionaries, then yes, yes we are. How come you're not working on your lunar cannon now? Because of that infernal noise is why! But Kwaman has moved back to the Orlowal village. He's not going to disturb you again, trust me. Really? How the heck did that happen? Me? Nah, I don't care. The important thing is, we can work again. Thanks, lady. Their walking animation is so cute. And so slow. Come on, guys, move it.
Also, my cat started making noise in the background, and I gave her a new toy, and she is now enamored with it, and it's adorable. It's a tiny little fox toy. At least I don't have to listen to her uh, playing with her tail anymore. How's it going? Almost there. Oh, uh, one tiny little problem, though. And that is? We don't have a bowstring for our, uh, uh... Propulsion drive mechanism, Wick. Uh, what he said, uh, yeah, we need a bowstring. Uh, something strong and flexible and sinewy. Like what? I don't know, lady. I'm no engineer. I'm just a supervisor. String made from animal guts would be perfect. Yeah, but look at us. Do we look like the kind of stick men who'd make good hunters? Do you see me going after a gank beast carrying what? A cone? A dry leaf sharpened to a razor edge? <laughs> you know, I'm starting to think that uh, Wick is the dumb one. Hey, Kwaman, can, uh, by chance, can I have that, uh, fishing line? That's probably what I need. anymore. Did my Laura work okay? It'd be working very good. Kwaman catch a large, tasty fish very quickly. April be wanting a taste? Uh, no. No offense. I'm just not too fond of seafood. This not be seafood. It be human food. <laughs> Aww. What's Kwaman gonna be doing now? Kwaman be sitting here until the sun sets. Then he be going to sleep. You slept for a month, and dude. And tomorrow? Kwaman be deciding that when he wakes up in the morning. Man, you got relaxing down to a fine art. Kwaman not be knowing anything about fine art. He be a Philistine. I'll see you later, Kwaman. So will I. Goodbye. I don't figure I'll be needing the rod this. anytime soon, but I'll borrow the line. Okay, let's go on back. There's nothing else I can get, right? It's Kwaman's fishing rod. Looks like Kwaman just had himself a solid lunch. That was quick. There are only bones left of his catch. Let's see if we can use those. Can you use this as bowstring for your, uh, lunar cannon? Let me see that. Oh yeah, that gonna work good. All right, listen up. I got us what we need. And now we finish this damn cannon. 
Go to work, people. Give us a few minutes, lady, and we'll be all done. <laughs> Construction noises. <laughs> it worked. Of course it worked, you wood-brained fool! I built it! Oh, that's adorable. Are you done? Yes, ma'am. The lunar cannon is now ready to be tested. Well? Well what? Are you gonna do it? Do what? Test the cannon. Me? And get myself killed? I think not. But go ahead, be my guest. I don't think I'll fit in there. That ain't my problem. I'll just place the hook along the bowstring, like so, and let the rope trail behind it. Okay, we're ready to fire! You know, I think that's a good place for uh, tonight's ending. I'm gonna go ahead and save again so that I don't lose that progress. And yep, check. I made that save. And we will pick up with that again on Saturday. Yeah, I would think that that guy would be in elation. He certainly looked like it. He had those flappy wings. So I guess we will talk to the elation next time and uh, see what their stories are. I'd forgotten that there was the whole thing with... Uh, Mr. Quammen that we had to get through. Let's see, I gotta read back through chat to see what all happened. What does the fox say? Well, right now the so fox says a lot of meowing. She is uh, very enamored with her new toy. Yeah, um, being a point-and-click game, there it takes a lot of doing to get much of anywhere. That's just kind of how it is sometimes. So how are you liking it so far? You been enjoying it? Good. Common was such a sweetheart. My heart goes out to him every time. Yes, you are the small boy. Small friend.
will say every time I, or sorry, the moment that I saw the thing about the, uh, Oh, the mer people? I can't remember what they call themselves. But the fact that they're aliens, I'm just going... Aliens. <laughs> With the hands. You know? That meme. This is very exciting music. I did not realize. Actually, let's go back to this. Because this is a very calm track. Yeah, the fact that they're aliens doesn't really come up much more, I don't think. But I, I do like the fact that throughout these games you are constantly flipping between like futuristic sci-fi and fantasy because of Stark and Arcadia. And uh, so depending on what episode you're on, some days you'll just get straight um, science fiction or sometimes it'll just be completely fantasy and it doesn't feel like the same game. It's It feels like two different games and it's awesome. And you, you get that feeling a little bit here in this game, but it's going to be like amplified ten times in the next game. Which, by the way, we should be there within a couple more streams, because we're in Chapter 8 right now. And like I said before, there's only 13 episodes. So... Next stream, we should be able to get to Chapter 9, and Chapter 9 looks pretty uh, small. So yeah, I, I estimate that within mm, maybe three more streams max, we'll have finished The Longest Journey, and then we'll be able to move on to Dreamfall, The Longest Journey. Which I'm really excited. Because there's so much plot that's going to happen in the next couple of streams. And it's all very, really cool stuff. I know I say that every single stream, but for real, it's going to be fun. But overall, as a game, have you been enjoying The Longest Journey? Like, in its, in its entirety? Because, I mean, I know it was very slow going at the very beginning, but that's, that's kind of how it is. Well, with that, I think I'm going to call it a night. I'm gonna go get some dinner and uh, probably close out the night. I hope you had a good time. I definitely did. And I hope that you will join us on Saturday. So thank you very much and may the balance be with you. <laughs>